We're talking about inhalant abuse, something that uh, I'm really fascinated by because I've not heard about this at all before. Okay. It's known as huffing, and it's on the rise, um, according to a new study by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SEMSHA. 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 Okay. Dr. Um, Adi Jaffe from uh, UCLA, uh, addiction, addictions researcher, is here to tell us more about it. Huffing, this is very interesting because these substances are legal. Yeah, they're not only legal, they're found everywhere. So Common. the way a lot of kids start out is glue, paint thinner, gasoline is, one, is another common one. Things that you would find in every household, aerosol sprays, um, the coolant inside, you know, um, whipped cream cans. Any of those kinds of things can be used to induce a high. And the interesting and sad thing is a lot of kids find this out by mistake. You know, I talk to a lot of people who may be especially back in the day, right, they used to create um, model airplanes or they used to, they, they sort of do crafts that involve glues or things of that mm -hmm, nature. Mm -hmm. They inhale them over some extended period of time while they're doing this kind of stuff and they get high and it's an experience that they like or dislike. If they like it, now they know, you know, when I use this glue, I can inhale it. If they really like it, they can start putting it on things and just sniffing it directly rather than while working with it and things like that. What kind of high are we talking about? I mean, is it the same effect on everybody or is it just different, you know, like, oh, I like my glue, oh, I like my you know, <laughs> aerosol spray, I mean. Really good question. So actually, there are a lot of different inhalants. They fit into four groups mainly. So solvents, aerosol sprays, which are literally spray can kind of things. Um, gases like nitrous oxide that I talked about, and then uh, nitrites that are a, really a completely different group. Each one of those groups and really each one of the drugs can offer a completely different effect. And like you pointed out, um, those effects can actually be even different for different people. So generally what we talk about though is disorientation, euphoria, some of the th same things that people experience with alcohol. The difference is this is a really quick high. So mm -hmm. you're inhaling the stuff. It goes right through your mucous membrane and your nose for the most part or your mouth. It goes right into your lungs. It doesn't go through your liver like alcohol or anything like that. And then it crosses right into the, uh, through the blood-brain barrier and goes into your brain. And what are the long-term effects then of this? Um, the long-term effects are not good. You can imagine inhaling large quantities of gasoline is not good for your brain when it goes directly into your brain. That doesn't sound like something that's good. Um, the thing is that up to now we focus mostly on adolescents, so mostly yeah. teens, because like I said, that's a, where a lot of people find this out is early on in life, sure. um, they kind of bump into it by mistake or a friend of theirs did and then they try it out and they like it. It lasts a couple of years and most kids kind of grow out of yeah, it. Yeah, we heard about kids sniffing glue, that kind of thing. Well, everybody hears about it in yeah. school. I mean, to be honest, uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, there was whiteout. Everybody still used actual whiteout, not the whiteout they have now in these if little schools. If you're under schools. like 25, or, or, you probably or don't do know. Or do the helium balloon that would make your voice rise. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that was kind of fun. Yeah. Well, fortunately, helium doesn't actually give you high, but if you put nitrous <laughs> oxide in that, um, in that balloon, it does get you high, and, that's, and kids will do that. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, kids will start experimenting with that kind of stuff, and they'll, um, they'll start just finding more and more things around sure. the house. The highs are different. Maybe they'll find the ones that they really, really like. We don't see a lot of it transition onto adult. This recent study that you uh, pointed out from SAMHSA, actually what they pointed out was that we have a larger number of adults that are using it. How many adults are using this? About 1.1 million adults last year. So on an annual basis, about 1.1 million adults. Now, just to keep things in perspective, we have about 270 million adults in the country, so we're still talking about a half a percent of adults. You right. know, look at uh, drinking, regular drinking in adults, and you're talking about something like 60 percent, 50 to 60 percent. So the numbers are much smaller than some of these other drugs, but they're a lot higher than other drugs. It's much higher than crack cocaine. It's much higher than cocaine use in general. Um, it's higher than all the drugs other than marijuana and alcohol. 